Hello everybody, uh, my name is Narendra Kumar and we are from Narendra Academy and today our topic is boiling. Boiling is different from evaporation. Both are, seem very close but there is a difference. We have already done evaporation and condensation. Now we will do boiling, melting and freezing. Boiling, now we will read this from this wonderful textbook where these wonderful authors have broken down this complex difficult concepts of heat into small parts and that too through activities. Now we have activity 10. Take a beaker of water, keep it on a burner, that's all. Note the readings of the thermometer for every 2 minutes. Now some questions he has asked. Did you see any rise or fall on the level of the surface of the water in the beaker? Why? Does the temperature rise continuously? When does the rise in temperature of water stop? It temperature rises, rises, rises stops at a point. You will notice that the temperature of the water rises continuously till it reaches 100 degrees centigrade. Beyond 100 degrees centigrade, no further rise of temperature of water is seen. At 100 degrees centigrade, though supply of heat continues, the temperature does not increase further. We also observe a lot of bubbling at the surface of the water at 100 degrees centigrade. Bubbling. Blah, 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 blah. That's it. This is what we call boiling of water. Why does this happen? Water is a solution. Now listen carefully. What is the deep process that is happening? He has explained here. Many people don't know this. Water is a solution. There are many impurities dissolved in it including some gases. When water or any liquid is heated, the solubility of gases in it reduces. As a result, bubbles of gas are formed in the liquid at the bottom and on the walls of the vessel. Evaporation of water molecules from the surrounding, evaporation of water molecules from the surrounding causes these bubbles to become filled with saturated vapor. It fills, gets filled with saturated vapor whose pressure increases as we increase the temperature of the liquid by heating. So the pressure of the bubbles increases as we increase the temperature. At a certain temperature, the pressure of the saturated vapor inside the bubbles become equal to the pressure exerted on the bubbles from the outside. That is atmospheric pressure plus the pressure of the layer of water above the bubble. As a result, these bubbles rise rapidly to the surface. So the pressure inside the bubble is increasing, increasing, increasing. At a point it becomes equal, little more than the atmospheric pressure the above the water above it. So obviously it, it gets the pressure, it goes up. As a result, these bubbles rise rapidly, very fast to the surface and collapse at the surface, releasing vapor. Releasing vapor present in bubbles into air at the surface. The vapor, the vapor inside is released into the air surface. This process of converting the liquid into vapor gas continues as long as you supply heat. So, this goes on happening. It becomes like that, like that, like that. It goes on boiling. This appears as boiling of water for us. Boiling is a process in which the liquid phase changes to gaseous phase at a constant temperature at a given pressure. It changes into gaseous phase at a certain temperature, at a certain pressure also. These, this temperature is called boiling point of a liquid. So, every liquid has a boiling point. At that temperature only it becomes a gas. Are the processes of evaporation boiling the same? As we have seen in activity 8 and 10, before we saw that, the boiling of a liquid differs essentially from evaporation. Note that evaporation takes place at any temperature. Evaporation takes place at any temperature. It goes on surface. It is a surface phenomenon. While boiling occurs at a definite temperature called the boiling point. Totally different process. Let us recall your observation in activity 10 that when boiling process starts, the temperature of the liquid cannot be raised further. No matter how long we continue to heat it, we, we decided that, we, we saw that. From normal temperature it went to 100, it stopped there. We are supplying heat it is not increasing its temperature. Something else is happening there. That is what he is explaining here. In activity 10, you have noticed that while heating the water in the beaker, 
the temperature of water rises continuously till it reaches 100 degree centigrade but once boiling got started no further rise of temperature is seen though supply of heat continues after 100 degree centigrade is reached the boiling starts what a concept this is and that heat every thing goes into vapor as explained before where does the heat energy supplied go the heat energy is used to change the state of water from liquid to vapor gas this is called latent heat of vaporization latent is a lovely word in english latent means hidden hidden we don't know where it's going latent heat of vaporization the heat energy required to change one gram of liquid to gas at a constant temperature is called latent heat of vaporization in terms of units in terms of numbers take one gram put heat amount of heat required to convert this one gram into vapor is called latent heat of vaporization consider liquid of mass m that requires heat energy of q then what is the latent heat of vaporization for m mass q so for one gram q by m so simple latent heat of vaporization is denoted by l cgs unit of latent heat of vaporization is calorie per gram si unit is joule per kg the boiling point of water at constant atmospheric pressure is 100 degree centigrade or 373 kelvin and latent heat of vaporization of water is 540 calories it requires 540 calories for one gram let us now consider the reverse process another process the transformation of ice into water why does an ice cube get converted into water that obviously we call melting that will be the topic for the next session thank you so much my name is narendra kumar and we are from narendra cat thank you so much